Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Take two. Yeah, can I complete my story? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Too long. Yeah. I could go on. I, I've written my I history. I think we can go around, I've though. Been, I, you you uh, read my history on the uh, three page report. Is yes. It, yeah. Well, we I'm, had a really I'm, good report from you. Yeah. I won't, uh, you told us a lot about it when yeah. we were making wine. Problem mm -hmm. is, it's all lost unless you say it again now. Oh. Well, okay, I can go to this. Well, only I was up with elementary school. I, so uh, I was introduced to uh, the shop. They had a, had a prefab building all out there. Had tools lined up on the wall. They had, didn't have many electrical things. But that's where I made that thing downstairs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that. And, uh, what grade was that? The sailboat that Eric Scott Oh, yeah. I never Eric didn't have that. Nope. That's huh? lost. Oh, it's lost? That's lost. What, what the grade night? were you in? Uh, well, I was seven and eight. Wait, mom was gonna say something when I left, and I so we didn't get to hear it. But I, oh, you were talking no, about. I was just saying that um, Don's mother and I we did a lot of stuff together and everything. But um, Don's dad was stoic and kind of silent. But yeah, he was. We were talking about how handsome they were. Well, yes, he was when he was a young man. Yeah. He was that. Yeah, he did. And yeah. um, I remember being out at the Woodland Beach. And we got an emergency call. We didn't have a phone at our cottage. And somebody from the clubhouse came over and said to call his mother. It was her number. And I thought, oh, something's happened. What it was is Paul was just a couple of years old. And they were going to Alabama and they wanted to take him. Yeah. So my mom and I left the cottage and, and, and got... Paul situated so he could go to Alabama when he was two years old with his grandparents. You've got a video of that. Yeah. A lot of it. Oh, and when we're running around the house. But, but it, yeah, was, it yeah. was his dad's idea. You're running that around. Think. That's the time. And then later yeah. I went with But I went more than once. I went to Alabama with Paul and uh, his parents and got to know the Alabama family. Because Don's dad was the only one that ever left Alabama with that big family, you know. And uh, yeah, I, I liked him. He was stoic, and he did he did things quietly for me, um, without me having to ask. He took um, David went crash into the patio door and cracked the glass. Yeah. And the it patio cracked door. and it all blew out. And um, that might have been when you were already in Florida. No, I don't. I, I wasn't there. No, you weren't, because we went on vacation in Florida in April, and you you accepted your job and stayed on down there, and I went back to sell the house and get all packed up and move. And David crashed into the patio door. He had the toy r uh, rifle, yeah. and, and the butt of that thing broke the glass. He didn't but know. He, he didn't he, know it was closed. Yeah, but he didn't. He didn't um, hurt door. himself, which was fortunate. Yeah, but. Without asking at all, Don's dad was over there and fixed that whole window and took care of everything. You know, and I didn't have to ask him for anything. He was always just silently doing things like that. And he did a few uh, a few other things that I don't even want to really talk about. Well, I'll do a story on the grandpas. Let's go around in the, in the order. No, you can no. Oh. Yeah, but that was just an example. But he did some things for me that that I don't even want to talk about because they're controversial. And, uh, it will, yeah, it's yeah. best to leave that yeah. uh, aside. Did you have an abortion? No. no. You're fine. <laughs> there you go, you're good. No, no, we didn't. I want to hear from everyone. Well, you, you can go first. Uh, okay. You want me to tell the grandpa stories? Yeah. All right, I'll try to talk fast. Okay, one of the stories, we don't have any stories on tape. But some stories are never even told. Like, for instance, we can concentrate on just the shop and how important that was. Well, yeah, but it's tell one. You talked about that a lot. Well, we'll start off with the most important story of Grandpa Roberts. So you saw the old car that I showed you the picture of? The Ford Fairlane? Yeah. Oh, no. the one we worked on. Yeah. Yeah, I think I drove in that car. That's yeah, but I mean, I showed seat. you the I pictures today. So let's start off with the beginning. Before I went to the shop, I was too young to go to the shop. So I, I would always sit on Grandpa's lap. I think uh, most of the time, either in the living room of the Putnam House or the second story of the Putnam House in the TV room. Did you talk, baby two. talk to you? Yeah, here we go. Yeah. Well, I, I don't remember all the things he'd say. But I he'd love say, to talk baby talk. You positively 
Shoot. <laughs> yeah, that's that's yeah. Yeah. that's, that's his that's the main thing because he said that the most. Yeah. yeah. But he also had a tape recorder, and I still got the tapes, and I still got the tape recorder, I think. Um, so we have his voice oh, recorded. Oh, I think you recorded that's so that. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And of course, we did some of the videotaping of me running around in Alabama. For some reason, most of the videos were done in Alabama. Okay, so Grandpa Roberts, when we went to the shop, um, I was very young to go there. So at first, I would go, and I always in the beginning of the day, I would sit over in the main uh, office and play with the typewriter, and I have a lunchbox there so I could eat, and you guys would be in the shop, and you'd do your thing. And eventually, I wore myself out. There's nothing more I could do in there. And I eventually came over to see what you guys were doing. So I was over there, I would say, probably six, maybe ten times. It's hard to say. I went there and learned a lot. So the first times I went in, Grandpa started making me stuff, which I wish I still had, but you know, a kid doesn't understand these things. Yeah. And when something's out in the carport or in the garage and exposed to the weather and the elements, uh, it slowly starts to deteriorate. Mm -hmm. And I don't have the ability to rub uh, lemon oil on woods and things like that and restain them. And, but I don't have them now, but I have memories in my mind of what they were like. He made me a nice little workbench. And oh, I remember there, that workbench. Yeah, and I wanted him to make me a car, and he made me a car, but it had wood wheels, and all I could do is go down, like down a hill. And we only had a small hill in our yard, so we did that. And then uh, a few times that we were over at the shop, and I got to ride in that old car that you saw in that picture there with the plywood seat. And I remember that. What's a plywood seat? But I didn't mind because we were glad just to go down the road and come back around. And then in the back of the shop, he had a room with two really nice cars that were all done. Yeah, and I have lots of times have dreams about walking through this complex maze of shop. And it's like my grandpa's shop, but it's someone else's shop and there's lots of other stuff there. So I like that. And uh, one time I saw they were in a pile. I even saw in the picture of that car, he had a pile in the back of their garbage piles that hadn't been dealt with. One time he has the garbage pile and he's starting to burn everything. And I'm looking at the pile, he's burned everything. I thought, Grandpa, don't start burning that. He's for some reason had a golf club, but it was a child's golf club. It was a metal pole, and it had a plastic thing on the end of it. And I said, Grandpa, save that. So he pulls it out with a stick or something like that, or a pliers, and he puts it in the water to cool it off so that so it won't get burnt, so I can play with it uh, as a golf club. It was a, had a metal, metal handle. It had a metal handle, okay. so it was a nicely made toy, okay. but then it had a big plastic thing, so you know oh. it's a real child. So, what did so he it? grabbed that. I don't know why he was going to burn it in the pile. So I said, Grandpa, pull it out. So he pulled it out. And one day I walked in, I always tell this to the kids. Um, I walk in and I go, Grandpa, where's the car? And I look around, there's no car, because we came in the car and the car, car's gone. And Grandpa doesn't understand the perspective of the child at that point, so he was a little terse with me and he told me, it's right there! <laughs> oh, <laughs> they had it up on the big pole because it could work on it. Lift. And I'm down here like this. I'm not looking around up there. <laughs> I'm going like this. Where'd the car go? <laughs> oh, okay. Um, and then I got to use some tools at the shop and do some various things. And Grandpa, I remember very important. Grandpa taught me how to go left to loosen a bolt and right to tighten a bolt. Hmm. I didn't have to learn lefty loosey righty tighty. He just told me and I remembered. And then um, there were a lot of times we were at his, uh, we come back home and I'm at his house and I see all the tools and I know he made me a tool uh, thing holder on my workbench to have things, but um, didn't know how to put the tools in the things because it was like these little pegboards and you put the tools in the things. Didn't have enough tools. And I want toy tools. I wanted real tools. So every time I was over at Grampy's house, when we walked by the garage or go down to the thing, there was a door that goes into the garage from the side, and there was a big door, and then there was a door from the house. And every time we go past the garage, I always start singing this little song. It's choose it time, it's choose it time, gotta have it, choose it time. And, and it's like that, that means, what, and Grampy goes, what's that, what's that song, what does that mean? And it means that I get to go by the garage, and I get to choose the tool. <laughs> so I bring oh, that over. and put it on my thing. So right. he had to guide me. You know, I couldn't just choose any tool, but there was always something I could choose that he would put. So I, then I would take it home and I would put it on the on my thing. And say, okay, I got a tool. Yeah. So 
So you had thing. more advanced tools than child's tools. Yeah, but they couldn't do anything with it because they didn't have anything to do with it. But one time I was in the garage, when you were working in the garage, and I said, I'm going to build a spaceship and a uh, flying what? ship, and we're going to fly into the, uh, into the uh, wherever and fly around, right? And I was building something in the garage while you were working out there, and I had the perfect thing for the jetpack that I needed because I had a fan. So I put the fan on one side, and that was going to be the fan that made the whole thing go. What, was it going to blow you? Okay. Yeah, and then everything else was like set up, and I was going to make it. So we never got off the ground, but it was great like trying to figure out what we were going to do. That was good. Well, that's the way inventions are made. Yeah. People give, give. Well, you got to have something to work with. Child, children have imagination. And yeah, Einstein says imagination is more powerful than knowledge, more important than knowledge. Yeah. Okay, so that's the one grandpa. And of course, he taught me how to water ski and all that jazz. And we'd sit in the church pew with him. And I guess at a certain point, I was old enough to sit in the church pew with him, even though it was junior church. I, I'm trying to figure out why am I sitting in the church pew with him sometimes? If there's always junior church, what would make it where I'm sitting in the church pew? Maybe some days there wasn't junior church. I don't know. But at the junior church, there was always a craft. I would always make a craft. Everybody would set up for the craft. And I would always show Grandma and Grandpa and you and Mom and show the craft that we made. It was fun. But we had to do lots of songs, and I wasn't very much into singing the same songs as everybody else. I still am not into participatory things like that. I wasn't in nursery school, kindergarten, or church. And then, of course, the church service, when I was taken out because my grandfather, Collie, had died, that was really harsh. But before we got there, I was over at my Grandpa Collie's house, and we had our own way of playing. He would come home after a long day, and Grammy and I would wait for him the whole time. And we'd walk over to the park, and we'd look for marbles and pennies in the grass, because everybody back then played jacks. So we'd find marbles and pennies. I always wonder, how could you find these marbles and pennies? Well, apparently people just drop those things because that's commonplace now. Instead of like cigarette butts and stuff like we drop, they would drop marbles and pennies because they're always using them. So we'd wait there on the swings and whatever and do whatever in the park until Grandpa came in the Ford Mustang. And then I got in the Ford Mustang, sat on Grandpa's lap, and he let me drive home to the house from there. Let you drive them. Yeah. Or steer the wheel. Yeah. So I let Max and Anna do that in the Jeep when we got, you can only do it on private land, they say. You can't do it without a license. It's oh, yeah. not private land. But he, that was not private land. So I let them drive up the road to the cabin. Um, that was their first experience yeah, in the same that. one. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so then we would watch Superman, uh, mostly at home at your house. We, you know, you have Batman on for me. I couldn't find that. I wouldn't know what oh, it is. Yeah, so I'm sure you made sure thing. it was on. Right. You made sure that was on for me. Because okay. I wouldn't know how to use the TV. It was a comical Batman. No, it was the Adam West Batman. Huh? It was the Adam West Batman. Oh, well, that's, that's pretty well, comical. I'm talking about the Oh, Adam okay. So at Grandpa Polly's house, I'm watching Superman. That's what we watch over there. So wait, uh, all these stories so far have been Grant. Grandpa I'm trying. Or, no, everything else was Grandpa Roberts, and now I'm switching over to Grandpa Collins. Okay. So uh, we also watched F Troop. We watched that, and uh, I remember we used to say we were hiding Grandpa's cigarettes. We tried to get him to quit. So oh. I said, Grandma, why don't we just hide his cigarettes? They won't have them. That'll solve the problem. So they were always talking about they're gonna hide them up in the rafters and stuff. And then Grampy had Grammy had a a chest in the bottom in the basement that had all kinds of dress up things. But I had to be careful with it because it was all really good stuff, like a real military hat, probably your crossing guard thing. That's probably how we did the crossing guard thing. And I told that story a million times. I'll tell it again because we're watching all the video. I said to Grampy, let's go out and do crossing guard work out in the front of the street, make sure that the cars know what to do. So he let me put the, you're probably your white thing. I'm thinking that's how I probably got there now that we've heard your story. And we go out well, the street. Well, I was a crossing guard. Oh, could, be, could be that, could be that one then. All right. So I go out on the street with Grampy out in front of the house, and we're waiting for cars to come because I want to tell them what to do. I want to direct traffic. Uh -huh. And then every time the car starts coming, Grampy would pick me up and put me over on the sidewalk or over on the lawn. And I go, Grampy, you don't understand. This is the time when I need to be there. You're taking me away at the most important time. How am I going to direct the traffic if every single time a car comes, you pick me up over there? Dolores Paladino. Oh, boy. Oh, well, I'm sorry. You better get it just in, just in case. Yep. That's more Hello? important. What do you mean? Oh, I forgot to do it. Well, go do it now. We'll 
Take three, coming up.